Good morning. This is Francis. I like to call myself Nibiru Tracker 2012 and the Perfect Minds. What you're looking at is Comet Elenin C forward slash 2010 space X1. Some call it a brown dwarf. Some call it a mystery. Some call it a ghost. I call it Comet Elenin. This is an image taken Sunday night, June 26th, 2011. It was taken with the Global Rentoscope Telescope Gross 004. It is a moderate deep space telescope which takes a smaller picture in space than the wide field views but it is a very good telescope like all of them are once you know how to get behind them and drive them to where you want to go as you can see there's a lighter box here because I'm, I've done some uh, more processing I'm in the process of processing more in this Macalai I software I can change dark and white pixels evenly and smoothly producing different results I'm going to lighten it up Saturday I took a series of images I looked at it there was a potential orbital here a potential orbital here the orbitals are gone there are no orbitals. There is no threat from Elenin outside of the potential breakup like any other comet has the potential to break up as it passes the sun or large gravitational gravitational mass. This is Comet Elenin. This is your brown dwarf. This is your black dwarf. Your black hole. Whatever you want to call it. Right now I'm calling it a hoe. It's another image. This is a black and white. What happened on Sunday evening is I took ten photos. Ten images. Each were exposed for 80 seconds. When you increase exposure, what you're doing is absorbing more light. When you use a telescope, you have those adjustments. When you go ahead and take the step that I took to use the Global Rentoscope Network, that's global rent a scope.com, you'll find out that anybody can do it with half the intelligence to go out and get the coordinates to be level-headed, to know what to expect, and to get what to expect. Because that's what I'm getting. I'm getting what I expected. I don't know why so many people are out there screaming this comet's name when it's right there and it has been there the whole time. This little fuzzy Fuzzy was here. And then it's moved. I've already shown it moving on one of my previous videos. One, two, three, the first three nights, 19, 20, 22. Um, all the days I'm imaging now are running together. This is June 28th. This here in the frame is Comet Elenin can darken it up. See how I'm darkening it up? Slide. Remove some more white. 
get to that back background area where we're all interested in things flying around the comet. You'll notice here there are some uh, image imperfections. There's a slash here. I think another one somewhere else. But when you look at these images and the amount of data that's on them and the potential for catching, uh, I'm not even going to call it an anomaly because it's not really an anomaly. It's just an imaging imperfection. If people can't look past those imperfections like here in this uh, image and now video, that's not my problem. Uh, on my Facebook this morning, my update, my first update of the day was I woke up and I pissed myself off. So, it's kind of hard uh, when so many people are talking, thinking about this object, and yet they are not physically doing anything about it, but listening to other people say things about it about C forward slash 2010 X1 that are wrong. This thing on the screen, this comet, is a comet. A four mile wide comet. So, it's big. It's not that big. It's getting brighter. And it'll continue to get brighter. I have no reference to tell you where the tail is, depending on the location of the sun, which I be believe is going to be to the southwest, because it's following it down. There should be a tail pointing somewhere toward the northeast, but it could be pointing away from the camera right now because of our, our Earth's physical position in relationship to the comet. That tail could be pointing away from us and I believe that's what we're dealing with some here. I also spent about five hours yesterday reading about what to expect when you go hunting comets and all the articles I read from the people who do it amateur as amateurs and people who do it as professionals what you see there is a comet. Don't get it confused with something else. Don't lose your head over this until someone like me who's actually filming it every day can say, oh look, today there's two. Or, oh look, today there's four. Because that's why I'm taking pictures. Because now it's one one that's not going to fall into the gravity well of our portal between the sun. It is going to fall in between the portal, the gravity portal between the earth and the sun, but it's going to keep going. At that point, when it's in that point, right in between earth and the sun, its tail streaming at us, what can we expect? I would expect a good meteor, uh, good uh, falling stars show. That's that's what I would expect. Um, it's not going to be a blowtorch burning us with particles and beams of electromagnetic energy. It's going to follow its path and then continue on as we actually get closer as it goes farther out and then we pass through its tail again at that point I think we're more likely to have an even brighter show at night when we pass through the tail toward November rather than on the September 26th date when the, this comet is right in between us and the Sun I said break up I said, I think that would be the most intelligent thing to look for with this comet. There are many more things. Right after this comet, we have um, 
I think that's why you 55. So once we get to the point where the comet is past Earth and we're going through its tail, our YU-55, the asteroid, catches up to Earth, and that'll be another close call around December 25th. This object here, this fuzzy object, does break the ecliptic plane on September 11th. It does go in between us and the Sun on September 26th. And then again, later in October, uh, we'll pass through its tail, which will give us potentially another good show. But uh, right now it's one. It's one comet. One little comet right there. There's nothing around it that's following it. I've taken enough pictures now. I'm, I'm, I'm decided. This is a comet. Don't lose your head over it. There's more to worry about, like the Missouri River, than this comet right now. You want to go to a cavern? I don't want to go to a cavern. Do you want to know what's going on? Like me? Don't boot me from a room. Listen to what I have to say. It may be the only truth you hear.